Hello, welcome back. In the last lecture, we learned how to modularize your program and that we have done by using this function called find price and whatever the logic that is required to automate the browser is uh, is, is available in this find price function. This find price method is taking a variable destination and what we are doing in the main method, we are calling find price with different arguments and it is computing and we are storing that in price one. So and then we are putting this if logic here so we can find out what is the cheapest itinerary. But here is a problem that we will face instead of just in this case we just have only two uh, values right. So how about if I want to compute the price for 2000. So are you going to write 2000 lines here like this or this there is some elegant way and in this lecture we try to explore that. So, so what we can do we can create an excel file in that excel file we will put all our data okay and I just have only five examples here I have five different combinations of departure city and arrival city and I put all those things here okay so what it essentially we want to do we want to read from this excel file okay and that excel file is available here somewhere so I want to read from this excel file and I am to read the data in the excel file to some variable here alright and let's say that variable is data okay and this is a two dimensional array and I do not know what is the size of this array that I have to determine okay so that is our goal to 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 write a program which is called excel read and that excel read program is going to read data from an excel set and put the value into a variable once we get in variable then we can use this variable to extend our program 2000 times 5000 times or whatever times that that doesn't matter anymore okay so so to read the excel file so what is the process okay so that is what is the goal of this lecture so so let's say this is your excel set in this excel so this is called the workbook inside that workbook we have a work set and this is what we call a row and inside that row this is what we call a cell inside that cell we have this data called SFO our goal is bring this SFO and put that one in the variable called data and this data variable is going to be, going to be an array and this array is going to look like this at this point we do not know how many number of rows are there at this point we do not know how many columns are there okay but the goal is to bring this SFO and put it here okay and so on so if you have a basic concept of file handling in Java then we just use those things and that is what it is so first thing is that we are going to create a, a object of file class and that object is Excel okay and what that Excel is doing this Excel is basically pointing to this file called data.xls then in the next step what I have done I have created a object called FIS which is a file input stream and that file input stream is pointing to this to this file object Excel in turns pointing to this data.xls that means you can think something like this so this is FIS object and this FIS object is now we have an input stream that means there's a pipeline to this data.xls so we can by using this FIS object we can retrieve data or we can write data both we can possible okay but here is a problem had it been a very simple file like a notepad then it was easy to read but this is an excel file so therefore if you want to use something like fis dot you know read that may not work and then someone else has already done some programming so that you can use those libraries to read this thing and that is called apache POI. The, the Apache POI is set up jar file which is going to give you the APIs to manipulate Microsoft documents like doc, xls, so on. So first thing what you need to do, you need to download this thing. So if you download this thing, there is, way, uh, there is a jar file that we are going to download. And then you add that jar file to your project build path. 
that I have already done just want to show you that so that is what go to properties and then that I have added something called POI that's dash 3.8 then the jar file okay so once we add this thing you will get a lot of different APIs and those APIs are going to help you to read from this thing and here is the code for that so these two lines of code is basically going to help you do that so inside the POI library we have a HSSF workbook class so remember that in order to find this thing first I need to find out what is the workbook and if I give the file input stream to this HSSF workbook constructor then it is going to create a object WB basically that inside that workbook there are many Excel, many worksheets are available one is input one is set to one is set three and so on so what I need to do to to get the worksheet the workbook object the workbook class has a method called get set and what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the name and the name is input. So that is why I'm going to give input. If you give something else, then this is going to fail. Okay. So far so good. So, so far we have reached how to get to this worksheet and worksheet name is input. Then my goal is to read this thing because remember at the end of the day, we want to take this value, take these values and put it to our array which is data right these two lines so once I get the worksheet object worksheet object has a method called get last row num get last row num will give the last row number but here is the thing that worksheet object is going to consider the first thing as 0 0 1 so therefore I need to add one actual number of rows are available to me so therefore here I did row num so because why I'm doing this thing because I want to I want to initialize this data object inside my program so that is why it's important to do to to know what is the total number of rows are available okay and then that is the reason I do one so basically this now after the execution of this program row num becomes six for me in this my example row num becomes six once I get the row num I also want to know the column name right because I basically you know so I know this is six now okay so what is this so to find out that what I did here I get the first row in this case ws dot get row zero will give me this row right then I need to know what is the last cell num okay and by using this get last cell num I find out what is the number of cells are available so here it starts with 1 and 2 so okay so unlike the get last row num the get last cell name will give you the total number of cells so therefore I don't need to add anything here so so what I'm getting right now I'm the, my my column name become 2 and after this what I did I just initialize my data object and this data object now become a string and obviously this is going to contain of string objects and how many is going to be a 6 by 2 so 6 row num 2 so that means this is going to look like this this is the first row second third four five and then number six then it's going to have two columns so that's how it is okay so so far the situation is like this so we are basically uh, trying to read from this Excel file and trying to populate this data object which is a 6 by 2 array alright so what are you going to do we are going to first read the row so first read this row and inside this row we get the first row and then we read a column okay so to, for the equivalent code is like this so first let's basically I think you know if you do the code work, work through for this then we should be able to uh, figure it out so let me just copy this thing here all right so so this is the code that that is equivalent so basically let, let's do a code work through here so what I have done here so, so the first thing is that I want to get you know in the for loop I want to iterate this total number of rows so therefore I is 0 and then I less than row num so how many rows I have, I have 6 rows here 
So in the, in here, I'm going to get the first row because the first time i is equal to zero. So therefore, it is going to therefore the row is going to get departure city arrival city. Then what I'm going to do in, in, inside an inner for loop, I am trying to see how many columns are there. And then here we have two columns. So first time I'm getting a cell, and if I do cell get row get zero, so the first time is row is this row. So this is the row that we are we are getting for first time, and then I'm getting the cell of of first cell, and that is departure city. And then what I'm going to do, the cell is a cell object. Okay, this is not a string. Remember this data that whatever we are creating this data object is a string variable. Okay, so that means we cannot just simply put cell into that. So we do we just write a function and that function is called cell to string. So if it's going to get a cell, it's going to convert that thing to a string. And we'll learn how to do that cell to string later, but that is what it is. And then once we pass that one cell, like for example, departure city is going as a cell there and the return is the string variable of departure city. And then what we are going to do? We are just going to add data ij that value. So that means in data we have departure city. Next time we and then this inner for loop is going to run one more time and going to give you arrival city here. Next time we are going to get the second row. Second row is SFO and then SFO and DFW and inside this is going to populate SFO and DFW. So this way, okay, so this is the Excel, Excel read program that is going to give you the capability to read from Excel set and put them into a data variable. Alright, and then just want to, the last thing that I want to talk to you about that cell to string. So this is what a cell, cell to string does. So whenever we get this uh, row dot get cell, we get a cell object. We don't really get a string. Okay, and then what we need to do, we need to find out what type of cell is that. It's a numeric cell or it's a formula or it's a string or whatever. Then we can do a switch statement and the case zero, okay, so the type, if it is a numeric value, then this value will be zero. So in that case, what you do, we do cell dot get numeric cell value. Okay, and cell dot numeric cell value will return you a object of result. Okay, then similarly, if we have a you know case one is for a string value. Okay, so if if, if the cell is a string, then it will be the type will be one. Okay, and then that is how you are going to create an result object. And finally, what about the object? We just make to a two string. Okay, so this is how it really works out. So so in this lecture, you learn how to read this Excel file and put that one to a variable to a, to a java variable data once you get a java variable data then we can do a little bit of programming there so that we can call this find price inside that loop so we'll learn that one later thanks